everyone today we will discuss the topic of parental care in animals parental care is the behavioral and evolutionary strategy adopted by some animals involving a parental investment being made to the evolutionary fitness of the offspring in other words we can say parental care may refer to any behavior that contributes to offspring survival patterns of parental care are widespread and highly diverse across the animal kingdom there is a great variation in different animal groups in terms of how parent care for offsprings and the amount of resources invested by the parents for example there may be considerable variation in the amount of care invested by each sex where female may invest more in some species male invest more in others or investment may be shared equally numerous hypotheses have been proposed to describe these variations and patterns in parental care that exist between the sexes as well as among the species so after completion of this chapter you would be able to know about forms of parental care patterns of parental care who provides care how much care is provided when care is terminated and who will receive the care parental care essentially includes the care of fertilized eggs its subsequent development stages until it is hatched as well as the care of newly hatched or newborn young till it becomes an independent adult capable of feeding for itself it represents the most interesting aspect of the animal behavior lower animals in order to perpetuate lay large number of eggs and sperms which are shed to the exterior so as to ensure that at least a few of eggs get fertilized and develop into the adults thus parental care in lower animals is either absent altogether or is restricted to only care of fertilized eggs however it is more prevalent in higher vertebrates particularly in birds and mammals therefore parental care can be defined as the care of fertilized eggs its developmental stages newly hatched young ones till they become independent a careful look at the definition reveals that parental care includes two things one is care of eggs and other is care of young ones so let us discuss one by one first of all care of the eggs as far as this aspect of animal behavior is concerned animals can be categorized into three groups those animals which lay eggs in protective egg cases or uthiki second those animals which guard the eggs or prepare nests to keep the eggs and third group is of those animals which carry the fertilized eggs till they hatch the first group in which they lay eggs in protective egg cases or uthiki and provide food and shelter but pay no further attention to them or to the offsprings The uthiki are generally placed at the safer places. There are so many examples in annelids like earthworms, leeches, in case of insects. Here in the picture you can see the uthiki of cockroach, oviparous sharks like cat shark, port jackson shark, for example chimera lay eggs in protective and horny egg capsules called mermaid purses these are attached to the sea beads by their long tentacles so in this case after laying the eggs and placing the uthiki at safer places they are not cared by the parents in case of second group of animals they either guard the eggs or they prepare the nest for the eggs to provide food in the nest or look after 
or incubate the eggs. The nests may be built either by the male or the female or by the both. There are so many examples like dobber wasp paralyzes the spiders and female lays egg on them and seal them in a tubular nest made of mud. On hatching, the larvae feed upon the spiders. In, in the same way, centipede care the eggs till they hatch. As far as vertebrates are concerned, the stickleback fish, Gastrosteus, is a freshwater fish. The male builds a nest with the help of dead water plants using its kidney excretion. After that, complex courtship behavior induces several females and then female lays eggs in the nest which is guarded by male till these are hatched. In the same way, there is another example of bowfin, the zoological name of which is Amia kelva. It constructs nests among water weeds. After the egg are laid by the female in the constructed nest, the male of these species guards the nest till they hatch. The male continues to keep the company of young ones and fingerlings also. In Folis, male fish guard the eggs by coiling around the eggs rolled into a ball-like mass. In case of amphibians, they picked vast variety of nests, for example, American tree frog, Phylomedusa, glues the eggs to the leaves that hang over water so that the tadpole on hatching falls straight into the aquatic environment. An interesting instance of nest building is found in Brazilian tree frog also, the zoological name of which is Hyla feber where the male prepare a crater out of mud which is about 25 cm wide and 10 to 15 cm deep with its rim a little above the surface of water. They prepare such nests in the shallow ponds and then female lays eggs in it. The Sicilians, for example, female ichthyophis and Congo eel Amphuma. Female guards the eggs by coiling around them till they hatch. Some species of flying frogs, for example, Racophorus, stir up a frothy mass of mucus and place it in broad leaves that are then folded and glued together to place this frothy mass in some cavity in the ground near the water. The eggs are then laid in this mass to provide them protection. In case of reptilians, nests of crocodiles range from a simple hole to mounds of vegetation and other material. Then eggs are laid in these nests. Communal egg laying is also found in reptiles. Here you can see the reference extent continuing my trend of catching up an article in the November issue of Natural History magazine which talks about a new study in the quarterly review of biology that finds group nesting to be very commonplace among extant reptiles. So you can see here the communal nest guarding in case of Eumesis, commonly known as kink. Snakes also guard their eggs. In this slide you can see brooding python. In case of birds, they lay shelled eggs. And the construction of nest is essential to lodge the fertilized eggs, which are then incubated and guarded by the parents. So in case of birds, parental care starts before egg laying with the preparation of nest. And when the eggs are laid, they are incubated and guarded by the parents. And after that, when they hatch, the young ones are also cared by the parents. So it is very long period for which the birds take care of their offsprings.
Birds prepare a variety of nests. The nest of some birds consists merely of a few blades of grass in a depression of the ground or tree hole. However, some species of the birds like weaver bird prepare really beautiful nests. The eggs are laid in the nests which are then incubated by one or both the parents. Larger part of the incubation is rendered by the female. Tailor bird prepare gorgeous nest with the help of leaves. The eggs are laid in the nest which are incubated by one or both the parents. In case of hummingbird, it construct their nest so as to blend them with the surrounding environment. Now let us see the third group of animals which carry the fertilized eggs till they hatch. There are some examples of this category. In case of female water flea, Cyclops carries her eggs in a pair of ovi sacs projecting laterally. You can see in this picture. In case of giant water bug, Bellostoma, the females glue their eggs on the back of the males. In case of female anodonta, a mollusk, eggs are kept in the brood pouches of marsupia which are actually the enlarged water tubes of the gills. The glossy fernid leeches lay eggs in protected uthiki which remain attached to the ventral side of the body. The young leeches emerging out of these continue to be fixed to the parental body for some time. Some of them displays a high level of parental care involving brooding and direct feeding of the young. These eggs are fragile and will not develop if removed from the parent. In case of female prawn, Pelemon, a sort of platform is formed by the pleopods under the abdomen to carry the eggs. The males of a number of marine fishes, for example tilapia, keep the eggs in their mouths till they hatch. During the entire process, the male does not take any food. After hatching, the young ones remain near the parent and at the time of danger, they hide themselves in the mouth of the parent. The male of new guinea fish, Kurtus, carries the eggs fastened to a hook-like process on its head. The male seahorse, Hippocampus, keeps the eggs in a brood pouch which is developed on its abdomen. In Simogaster, the fertilized eggs are kept in the body cavity till their hatching and fully formed youngs are formed. In case of amphibians, female dusky salamander, Esmognathus fuscus, carries cluster of eggs wrapped around her neck. In case of midwife Todd, Alitus, Abstetricians, the female carries strings of eggs wound about his thighs. Yet another instance of an amphibian carrying the fertilized eggs is seen in case of female of marsupial frog, Gastrotheca, where the female keeps the eggs in a brood pouch formed on her back from a fold of skin. This pouch opens posteriorly. The female Suriname toad, Pipa Pipa, carries eggs in the brood pouch formed on her back only during the breeding season. So, in this case, this brood pouch is temporarily developed at the time of breeding season. The male tree frog, Rehinoderma darwini, utilizes its enlarged vocal sacs to carry eggs till they hatch. In viviparous animals, owing to internal fertilization followed by the development of the embryo within the body of the female, 
Nest building activity is related to the development and care of the newly born young one only. Now we will take the second thing that is care of young ones. Once the young ones are born, they are to be protected. In case of invertebrates, only a few invertebrates show care for their youngs. Among annelids, glossiferid leeches continue to be attached to the parent body for some time. Parental care of offspring is commonly seen in the social insects like honeybee. The eggs are deposited in the hexagonal shaped cells in the hive and worker bees visit the cells, clean them, inspect them and feed the larvae that come out of the eggs. The larvae pupate and then adults emerges in a few days. Care of youngs is also seen in scorpions where female scorpion carries her offsprings on her back for about a week. As far as vertebrates are concerned, care of young is also there both in cold-blooded and warm-blooded vertebrates. In fishes, the male bofin, Emia kelva, keeps company of young fishes for some time. In case of mouth breeding tilapia, young ones take shelter in the oral cavity of the parent at the time of danger. Among amphibians, marsupial frog, gastrothica and the Suriname tot pipa pipa protect not only the eggs in the skin pouches but also the tadpoles that complete metamorphosis there and leave the pouches only as tailless adults. Snakes also guard their eggs. Parental care is particularly seen in case of birds and mammals. So first of all, we will study the case of birds. Protection of the young reaches a high degree of development in birds. Most birds will fight ferociously for their offsprings. For example, a mother hen with baby chicks makes a dog turn tail and run. All birds have to incubate fertilized eggs to produce offsprings. Incubation may be done by one or by both the parents. Larger part of the incubation in birds is rendered by the females. Although in several instances both the parents share this feat and occasionally only the male performs this duty. As far as nest building is concerned, it is a remarkable instinct in different groups of birds. Each species tends to use particular material and constructs nest in a particular way. Some birds part company soon after the mating is over. Other remains together to share the nest building and for the care of their young ones while some birds select mates forever. So it will depend on the species. Some bird species form permanent pair and share the responsibility and some species part company soon after the mating. Two major activities comes under the parental care are feeding and protection. In case of birds, two types of chicks are there, altricial youngs and precocial youngs. Many species of birds hatch ugly, naked and blind young. These helpless creatures are commonly called the altricial youngs. This is typical of most of perching birds whose nests are built on trees and other protected places to ensure fast growth and their quick exit from the nest, altricial young ones eat more than their weight each day and their parents must carry food almost constantly throughout the day. Therefore, parental care is more prominent in the birds producing altricial youngs. Many other birds have their nests on ground and would be more easily subjected to predation by the enemies 
if they spend their early days in such a helpless condition as occur in the altricial youngs such birds usually have precocial youngs which when hatch out covered with down feathers their eyes are open and these are able to begin walking and taking their food shortly after the hatching for example chickens grouse pheasants ducks and loons both the precocial and altricial young need care from the parents for some time after the hatching early feeding of the young is one activity under the parental care a good example of parental care involving early feeding is met in pigeons where the young ones are fed with the pigeon milk a milky and nutritive secretion of the crop glands in some birds which is regurgitated and fed to the youngs in addition to early feeding of the youngs by the parents young ones are also protected against the rain sun and enemies a clever means of deception is used by the quail and other ground nesting birds to draw their enemies away from the nests when a possible enemy approaches nest the mother quail will dart from the nest flying and fluttering on the ground like a bird with the broken wings the predator will not probably give chase since the flying and fluttering female quail appears to be easily obtained prey after leading the predator for some distance the female quail will fly into the air leaving the predator a safe distance from the nest in the same way humming birds probably are most courageous in displaying the care of the youngs in order to protect the young ones from the enemies they construct their nest in such a manner so as to blend completely with the surroundings this phenomenon is known as camouflage the king penguins have peculiar way of carrying their young these birds do not construct nests but hatch eggs in a fold of flesh between their legs an interesting phenomenon of nest parasitism is also seen in the birds many birds like cuckoos do not construct nests but lay eggs in the nests of other birds like those of crows for hatching and foster feeding of their young this phenomenon is commonly known as nest or brood parasitism parental care in case of mammals the characteristic feature of the parental care in mammals is the production of milk by the mother on which the young ones subsequently feed the mother not only feeds her youngs but also performs other duties like cleaning keeping them warm as well as to make them learn to feed upon the solid food in case of monotremata this includes the egg laying mammals like tachyglossus and ornithorhynchus tachyglossus is terrestrial whereas ornithorhynchus is aquatic parental care in these species differs markedly tachyglossus commonly known as spiny ant eater the eggs as well as the young ones are kept in a pouch present on the ventral side of the abdomen these monotremes therefore do not exhibit burrowing nesting behavior the full proof mechanism by which the eggs are transferred from the cloaca of the female to the pouch on the ventral side of her abdomen is still uncertain however most probably the eggs are passed directly into the pouch from the cloaca rather than the other alternative of placing them there with the paws of the mother after hatching the young ones are kept in the pouch and fed on milk from the mammary glands until they are about 20 cm long and 400 g in weight after the young ones are ejected out of the pouch they are still taken care by the mother young ones are fed irregularly 
and the interval between the two meals sometime it is long as 36 to 48 hours in case of aquatic ornithorhynchus commonly known as duck-billed platypus execute a special nesting burrow ranging from 15 to 20 feet in length and 1 to 1.5 feet below the surface every time before laying eggs the female extends the same burrow which may finally acquire the length of 100 feet or so. At the terminal end of the burrow, a chamber is formed which is lined with the grass, leaves, etc. to form the nest. The female remains in the nest during the incubation period with her body curled around the eggs. The burrow is plugged from inside at more than one point all along its length to provide the safety to the young ones. So various activities concerning parental behavior in ornithorhynchus are digging of the burrow, making of the nest at the terminal end of the burrow, incubation of the eggs by curling of the female's body around them, then blocking of the burrow at several places to ensure the safety to the young ones and above all suckling the youngs. In case of marsupialia, parental care in marsupials involves many activities like the pregnant female removes dark colored scales from the inner side of pouch called marsupium and thoroughly cleans it. The process of cleaning the pouch is greatly intensified few hours prior the parturition. As the placenta is not capable of supporting the rapid development of the embryo, extremely small young ones called mammary fetus still undergoing embryonic development are delivered. These young ones are immediately lodged in the protective marsupium for further development. The birth weight of young ranges generally from one third of a gram to one gram. In general, after parturition, the immature young ones have to traverse quite a distance before being able to lodge themselves in the pouch. There are evidences to the fact that surprisingly the mother does not assist the young in this great task. In the brood pouch, young ones nourish themselves on milk from the mammary glands and simultaneously get protection. After the young ones arrived in the pouch, the only maternal care they require inside the pouch is attention to maturation and defecation. The mother licks the cloaca of the young, thus inducing them to urinate and defecate. At the same time, she removes these wastes out of the pouch to keep it clean. In many marsupials, for example, Smythopsis, the female with newly hatched young ones in its pouch becomes very aggressive. In kangaroo and fall bay, the young ones are nourished in the pouch until they are able to take the solid food. The duration of their stay in the pouch varies from species to species. In Megalina rufa, the young is about 190 days old when it comes out of the pouch for the first time. But for a short interval, this activity continues till the young is about 235 days old. Even at this stage, the young keeps the company of the mother and at intervals, is still permitted to put its head inside the pouch for sucking the milk. This continues till it is about one year old. During this special care period, if young one gets lost, it raises an alarm to which mother responds and traces it. In Polytochus species, Polytochus means producing several young ones at each birth, which is also known as litter. The litter outgrows 
the pouch at an earlier stage therefore at this stage the young ones are kept in a protected nest or else but they continue to keep the company of their mother until they are capable of fending for themselves in case of opossum according to her nam 1952 all young ones are carried on the back from the time they become too large for the pouch in case of marmosa an other variation is observed in smenthopsis where the young ones after being dislodged from the pouch are kept in a nest and mother brings food for them in addition mother also carries grass and leaves to furnish the nest at intervals in case of eutheria parental care in eutherian is broad ranged since these placental mammals do not have a brood pouch the newly born young therefore should either be sufficiently advanced to be capable of independent locomotion and keeping warm or they must be protected in some type of nest broadly speaking the young ones may therefore be considered as precocial or the altricial behavior related to the care of the youngs normally begins during the pregnancy the altricial species the parents prepare nest in advance and this activity is generally initiated or intensified during the pregnancy the nest building activity is primarily the task of the female or both male and female interestingly in tupia the male constructs the nest 4 5 days prior to delivering of the young by the female in those species which do not build nest the females select suitable natural refuge for example domestic cats lioness in precocial ungulates the females move out to lonely places to deliver the offsprings this is frequently observed in sheep goats and many other bovids in case of camels maternal attention is poorly developed immediately after the parturition in addition to protection and suckling the young mother frequently cleans the offspring also in certain provide like sheep and goat licking of the anogenital region of the young by the mother is frequently observed perhaps to stimulate the young to urinate and defecate these excretions in case of guinea pigs and many canine are consumed by the mother perhaps in an effort to avoid the specific odors we generally attack the predators in case of rodents and some carnivores altricial young ones are incapable of maintaining their body temperatures soon after the birth so in these animals the mother usually curls around the youngs to keep them warm in order to avoid detection at the hands of predators the altricial species the mother minimizes her visits to the nests for the feeding and grooming of the young in carnivores the young ones are unable to kill their prey with constitute their food parental behavior in these animals therefore substitute suitable methods to supply food to the young ones temple the mother may carry a portion of prey killed by her to feed the young as in foxes and raccoons dogs and domestic cats is seen in case of insectivore mammals like suricata the mother is very such enthusiastic to provide food to the young whenever she succeeded in catching the insect it instead of eating herself runs to the young ones to introduce the prey as food to them the youngs of higher primates are somewhat anomalous and cannot be categorized as either altricial 
or precaution the newly born young ones possesses the fur and their eyes are open but their mobility is limited these have gripping and grasping abilities to cling to the parent fur and be carried about interestingly in the marmoset hapeljackus male looks after the young and also carries them however the female feeds the young ones with milk from her mammary glands in monkeys and apes the female takes care of the young in arboreal species the clinging transport of young by the parent is highly developed young gorillas learn eating by seeing their parents in chimpanzees it has been observed that infants take half chewed food from their mother's mouth so this is all about the parental care that how parents take care of their young ones and ensure their survival and fitness in the next session we will discuss how different questions may be framed from this chapter till then goodbye thank you so much